Today we're talking about the Saucony Ride ISO 2. Twenty point one one miles, eight minutes, eighteen seconds per mile today. Getting in a nice long run. It was a beautiful day to go for a run today in the Saucony Ride ISO 2. Now, before I get into my thoughts on my first run with this shoe, I want to go over some disclosures. For this shoe, there aren't any. This is a pair of shoes that I bought with my own money, and no one knows that I'm making this video or is going to have any editorial input or control. No one's going to be able to see it, the video or any of the footage until you guys get to see it on YouTube. Now, with the disclosures out of the way. Let's talk about the Saucony Ride ISO 2. This is a shoe that I've been pretty excited about, but I've also been lukewarm on it at the same time. It's hard to kind of explain. And that's because this is my third pair of the Ride series of shoe from Saucony. The first pair I had was two years ago with the Saucony Ride 10. I had the GTX version. I absolutely loved that shoe. It was a little bit heavier of a shoe for me at the time, but it was a winter shoe and it had Gore-Tex on it. And I'm a sucker for any shoe with Gore-Tex on it. And I put a ton of miles through the winter on it. And there's a lot of sentimental value for me in that shoe because I ran my first like sub zero Fahrenheit temperature run in that shoe. I had a half marathon PR in January in that shoe. Uh, I just had a really great time with the shoe. I absolutely loved it. I put a ton of miles into it. Fast forward to then last year's iteration of the ride and instead of being the ride 11, it became the ride ISO. The ride ISO from last year was supposed to be a little bit of a redesign, something a little bit more modern. Uh, they went for a little bit more of a bold design, which I appreciated the attempt. And I actually really liked the look of that shoe, but it had a whole bunch of problems. And I was hoping that the ride ISO 2 would solve a lot of those. But I also, some of the things that I didn't like about the ride ISO, at least the ride ISO 1, had me wondering, do I really want to pick up Ride ISO 2? I went ahead and I did it anyway, and I'm really glad that I did because it has solved a lot of the problems that the first Ride ISO had. Not that the Ride ISO was a bad shoe, it was a good shoe, it just wasn't great. What we have is a neutral shoe from Saucony, but with Saucony, they like to slide in a little bit of stability on all their shoes, and I could feel it a little bit on this one, it wasn't a problem for me. But they've got uh, Everrun, as the top sole and then power foam as the midsole. So it's a dual layer foam and it's just an extremely comfortable shoe. Really great step in comfort and just walking around wearing it all day was really comfortable. The additional parts of comfort come on the parts that touch your ankle and heel. The tongue is extremely padded. The heel collar is extremely padded. That's how it keeps your foot locked in with just a ton of padding. It feels like you're stepping into a really, like a memory foam pillow. It's really, really nice, comfortable to put on your foot, especially if you're at the, towards the end of a really long run streak, which I am. Getting your foot into this is just a relief. It feels fantastic. And then underfoot, once you're, foot is on the insole and on top of the midsole. Walking around, uh, the step in comfort is really great. And then on terms of the upper, uh, you've got, I think they call it jacquard mesh. Uh, very fancy, uh, but also very breathable. Feels nice, it's pretty lightweight. And the toe box is nice and roomy on the shoe. Moving towards the midsole and outsole. The outsole pattern, I think is pretty similar from the ride series that they've had. Uh, a lot of rubber on the outsole here. It's nice and beefy. You're gonna be able to get a ton of miles in this shoe. And for me, in my mind, the Ride ISO shoe is a longer mileage shoe. It's not the fastest shoe you're gonna have, but it's something that you're really gonna be able to beat up and log a ton of miles in. And the outsole pattern here kind of reflects that. There is a little bit of exposed foam, but for the most part, you're gonna be running 
on, on the rubber that's out here. And this traction pattern is really, is really great. Works great in the winter time, really great on wet surfaces as well, and really good uh, in, in the summer, just general getting in a ton of road miles. Now let's go over the things that I didn't like about the Ride ISO 1, and then I'll talk about if they're improved in the Ride ISO 2. So the Ride ISO 1 I thought was a heavy shoe, I thought it was clunky, and I thought it was really hot. Now in terms of weight, uh, Saucony tells us that this is their lightest ride shoe ever, uh, and I would tend to agree. I don't know the exact weight. The listed weight on their website is 9.8 ounces for all of you who keep wondering what the ounces are on the shoes, uh, but I don't know what size that's for. But this one, I can definitely tell that it is lighter than last year's ride. Uh, that was something that was evident right out of the box, and especially on foot in terms of the balancing of the shoe. Uh, in terms of the clunkiness of the shoe, last year I felt like the midsole, the way it was designed, it was very stiff. So there wasn't any um, torsion that was possible with the shoe. And that got a little bit uncomfortable for me at times because it got to the point where as my foot was hitting the ground, and many of you have commented that I overpronate, and uh, I think I pronate, maybe overpronate, but in either event, that's how my foot strikes. But when the the platform of the shoe is very rigid. It makes me feel like the shoe is fighting me in terms of how my foot naturally wants to hit the ground. And instead it's trying to get me to turn my ankle in a way that feels unnatural to me in order for the shoe and my foot to kind of get an agreement. And usually when a shoe and a foot are in disagreement, it's the foot that suffers. And so I didn't get any pain from running in the ride I so last year, but it also wasn't my favorite kind of longer mileage shoe because of the rigidity of that platform. This year they've solved that. Whatever they've done to change it, I feel like the foam is a little bit softer and I don't feel that rigidity in it. So like in that like kind of that torsional uh, rigidity. And so I feel like it's working with my foot in a much more synergistic way. I just like the way that my foot's striking the ground and taking off and pushing off and getting through the, the gait cycle in terms of my stride. And I think that this shoe is much better to run in than the Ride ISO from last year. Um, out of the box, I took it for a 20 mile run today. Probably wouldn't recommend that for most shoes. Uh, but I also kind of think that breaking in a shoe for most shoes is a little bit overrated. And so I'm usually not too afraid to take a shoe for a long run right out of the box. Uh, and this shoe did really well over the 20 miles. I think that around the, well, today was a really tough day for me. Mentally, I had a, 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 new, a, a not recommendably large lunch and then I ran relatively early. I had to run a lot earlier than usual to get the miles in today. And so I just felt really bloated for like the first 11 miles, which is really uh, un uncomfortable. Uh, and then it got a little bit hot. And so I was trying to take in a gel, trying to take in a lot of water while stuff was happening. Uh, so that was a little bit distracting in terms of the run. I was worried that some of like that hint of stability that Saucony likes to put in their shoes was starting to bug my left knee around mile seven or so. Uh, but that ultimately went away and it wasn't an issue. So I think that um, to the extent that they're kind of trying to help us a little bit with different regions of extra firmness within the midsole, it's not a bother for those of you who prefer a neutral shoe. Those are the, the you want that extra little hint of stability. Like if you love the Canvara uh, 9 or the Canvara 10, then this is going to be right up your alley in terms of the way that this midsole feels. It reminded me a lot of that Ride 10 GTX that I loved so much. So I was feeling really good. Uh, but around mile 15, I started to feel like, uh, I don't know if the shoe is bottoming out somewhere in the midfoot over here, or may, maybe the Ever Run was starting to kind of lose some of its squishiness. Uh, and I was hitting more of that power foam that's underneath. I'm not sure what it was, but on the other hand, I was 15 miles into a run at the tail end of a really long run streak. So I think it's really just my feet and, and not the shoe, but just letting you know that that's something that I felt out there. And if, when I go back to look at the splits, uh, about mile 15 is when the split started speeding up. And so, uh, and I wasn't really trying to do that. I think just naturally around the 15 or 16 mile mark, I start getting bored and I kind of start speeding up because I want to get done. Uh, and I saw at least to that extent, this didn't stop me from doing any of that at all. The last thing that I'll talk about is kind of the hotness of the shoe from last year. Last year's shoe was really hot. I think they also released it, and I'll go back and check the dates to see if I'm uh, right on this. I think they released the Ride ISO last year 
in the, the, the dead middle of summer. And so they had a hot shoe that was released at a hot time. Uh, this year they released it a, a, you know, first week in May. Um, and so it's a, temperatures are a little bit cooler now. And in Chicago, we're getting a really slow start to the spring. And so for today, this was just absolutely perfect to run in temperature wise. I do think though that the mesh, everything about the upper seems to be just a little bit thinner. And so like the materials, uh, are a little bit less thick, which I think is going to be good once it starts to get really hot in Chicago. So I'm hoping that that stays true, that it's not hot. But one thing that's gonna be unavoidable in terms of heat in the shoe is all this plushness, like all this pillowy softness is great when you first put on the shoe. But when I think about summer running in this, I think about how my foot and leg is in here. And for me, sweat just drips all the way down. So I get wetness kind of two ways. One is because I run through water and I get water on the forefoot. That all dries off relatively quickly and it did today. But the other area of wetness that I'm very concerned about is sweat that drips down my leg and just pools right here. And because everything's very snug up against my ankle and heel in this area, it all just kind of sits and pulls right in these soft pillowy cushions. And there's lots of areas, like literally it's a sponge. And last year it just got super wet in here and then my sock would get wet and then that water would just kind of transfer all over and my socks would just always be soaked every time I ran in the right eye. So last year. This year, it wasn't too bad. I did feel like as I went through water today, that water that got into the tongue, which is super padded, or in this heel collar, which is also super padded, did stay in there a little bit longer than I'd like. Um, but it also wasn't a super sweaty day. So the jury is still out in terms of whether this is going to still be a very hot shoe or this is gonna be a problem or not. I think that from the upper and they've gone very minimal in terms of the overlays, just like a little piece of overlay here and on the other side, uh, which I think are gonna really help in terms of getting some of that heat out of the shoe. This might still be a problem, but you know I'll be putting a lot more miles in it as things start to heat up and uh, stay tuned for the 100 mile review uh, to see an update on that. But those are my thoughts so far on the Ride ISO 2 from Saucony. Uh, I think it's an improvement for sure over the Ride ISO 1, uh, mainly just because even if they did nothing with the upper, uh, the changes that they made to the midsole that make it a little bit more flexible and less rigid, uh, I think are certainly gonna help. This is a shoe that I'm gonna be busting out for my kind of moderate effort, longer run days. Uh, and some of my recovery run days, things that might be shorter, but I want a little bit more comfort, uh, something a little bit easier on my feet and joints. This is definitely a shoe that I'm going to be reaching for and putting a lot of miles in uh, over the summer. So let me know uh, if you have any questions about the Ride ISO 2 or any of the prior iterations of the Ride series. Uh, I'd love to talk to you guys more about the shoe down in the comments. Now, before I go, I wanna remind you guys about the charity runner for the week. It's Albert Wu. He's running the American Heart Association's 2019 Wall Street run today. So today's your last day if you wanna donate. I've already donated 70 bucks to Albert's fundraising efforts, and I'll post links in the description and hope you'll consider joining me. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?